So this was meant to be uh, the next edition of the Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough, but my graphics card had other ideas. Good evening, good morrow and good day and welcome to another edition of Slice and Dice and uh, here it is a feature I've been thinking about for quite some time. Um, really to sort of uh, go over this, uh, my newest obsession. My newest um, TTRPG that I think more people should play because it's fantastic fun. And there's so many things I think that if you're moving on from 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, like this is a really easy game to get into from that because it's based off of the same mechanics. So it's a very easy game to pick up uh, for D&D players. So this one could be for you. Uh, so I was having a bit of a crisis after all of the OGL scandal and all the other scandals that seem to be associated with Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro and anything else to do with the Dungeons and Dragons IP. Um, and that I did just had decided on principle as much as anything else uh, to move on uh, from that and find something else. And, and I kind of, I guess, had a bit of a TTRPG renaissance, which is um, kind of, I feel like the whole community has gone through a bit of a renaissance in the last year. And so all of these other um, TTRPGs that have been around for a long time have suddenly um, not sprung up, but suddenly come to people's attention. Um, and so I was pointed in the direction of Free League, a Swedish company, or Fria Ligen. Apologies if you're Swedish and I pronounce that in a terrible accent. No offence intended. Free League have uh, a bunch of interesting IPs that they have uh, made TTRPGs out of, uh, as well as some of their own. Um, so, for instance, they've got um, Alien, Blade Runner. Uh, they've got some uh, new ones of the... Uh, they've got, even got Lovecraft in there as well. Uh, they've got some of their own um, IP. I think they're their own ones, like Pirate Borg, or ones I certainly haven't heard of, uh, Vaysan, uh, and others. And in fact, they've also got up and coming... It has piqued my interest. Uh, the Walking Dead um, t uh, tabletop role playing game, which is uh, due to be released, um, which says coming soon. We'll find out how soon, probably le next year at this point. Um, and of course, they have the Lord of the Rings. And uh, what happened was they bought um, this uh, system called the One Ring uh, um, TTRPG, um, which is what Lord of the Rings role playing, which I'm going to be talking to you about today and in future videos. This this thing right here. Look at the book, it's so shiny, it's so shiny. I'm not listening. Is based off of, so the Lord of the Rings role-playing is essentially the fifth edition port of the One Ring TTRPG. Um, so uh, a lot of inspiration can be drawn from the One Ring, but you don't have to learn the rules of the One Ring if you play the Lord of the Rings role-playing. It uh, works out very nicely like that. <laughs> and in my sort of crisis zone of what are we going to do next, um, I didn't want to move too far away from the mechanics of D&D because I, I balked at the prospect of having to learn an entirely new uh, rule set from scratch because that's going to take a while. Um, in fact, so much so that I even found Pathfinder to be too much because, well, it, Pathfinder, in my opinion, don't hate, is just, um, it's a bit much. No, and so I sort of went back to basics and uh, what better basics than to go to the godfather of high fantasy which is the world of Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings and of course that's uh, when the Lord of the Rings role playing came to my attention the beacons of the beacons are lit. from uh, Free League as I say it's a port of the One Ring so it's already like grounded in something that exists and clearly has been refined and worked on over time um, and it's just I personally think it's really well done and uh, I looked online, looked over YouTube and I couldn't find um, any sort of breakdown of all the individual sort of features of the Lord of the Rings, just as sort of a uh, Lord of the Rings role playing, just as like a, um, almost like a starter guide kind of thing. And I know there were loads of them for fifth edition and I found those really useful when I was starting up on that. So hence the new feature, haven't quite decided on a name yet. It could be Slice of the Dice. It could be something else that's a slice of dice and Lord of the Rings role play, but meshed together. I'll come up with something hopefully, but if you have a, a suggestion, please write it in the comments, uh, and I may well steal it, uh, and I will credit you for stealing it uh, for for stealing it from you. I'm obviously, going to you know cite my sources. I've been running um, a game of it myself. I'm onto well the sixth 
live session will be uh, this weekend. So uh, yeah, we've been uh, We've, we've done a fair few sessions now, so I've managed to get a grip with some of the mechanics of the game. There are so many things I love about this, and so I'd like to sort of dedicate a short video, short bite-sized video to each of those uh, and deliver them to you. And uh, hopefully that will uh, uh, sort of scratch the itch for you as well, or perhaps will uh, become... Uh, pique your interest as well. Uh, that would be that would be fantastic. In the videos, I'm going to be breaking down transitioning from fifth edition to Lord of the Rings role playing. So there's some terminology that's slightly different. Classes or callings, as they're called in this. Cultures, aka the uh, races or species, as they were known in uh, fifth edition. Other aspects of the game. Um, some of the things I really liked in Lord of the Rings role playing compared to fifth edition uh, of Dungeons and Dragons was that uh, some spells obviously are not really a thing in Lord of the Rings role-playing. Soft magic is a thing, but um, it's sort of taking that out of the equation as a dungeon master means running a game is actually uh, a lot more, is a lot simpler. Um, it's uh, It means that there's less things that can happen unexpectedly and go awry, but it also makes the encounters more challenging for longer, and I just think that's so much better than having like a MacGuffin or having uh, like just this tool in your chest that can like get you out of any situation, which can make developing encounters for fifth edition especially at higher levels quite difficult speaking of higher levels one of the other things i really like about this is that it focuses on low level play uh, your characters can only go up to 10th level and then it sort of caps at 10th level you can do stuff after 10th level but at 10th level is the maximum level you can get to rather than 20th and so that kind of peaks the power level it caps the power level um, at a rate that means the world is still uh, challenging and exciting uh, rather than being sort of a cakewalk which it can be when you've got god level powers as happens in seems to happen in late level um, fifth edition dungeons and dragons <laughs> the other things that uh, are really good about this and i think even if you're not going to be picking up Lord of the Rings role playing as your system, there are certainly things you can take from it and put into uh, your other TTRPGs. Um, and that is the way that they have sort of introduced some uh, mechanics and uh, a really fun sort of mini game almost. And that is um, the uh, exploration and the uh, social uh, interaction. So, in social encounters and exploration encounters are all um, given their own sort of. Um, chapter almost uh, in the book and that's uh, in Lord of the Rings role-playing it's known as journey for traveling and uh, for council for when you have your social uh, encounters so it's all sort of there's mechanics for it there's dice rolls there's skill checks there's all the rest of it uh, and one of the other lovely things which I can show you right now is uh, that the the books First of all, you order the books online, you get a free PDF with it as well, which means you can use it anywhere. When you get the books, they're like on this like parchment like paper, there's like lovely artwork in here. Um, it's like a really nice tactile experience. But also, uh, so you get a hex map in the back just for the DM though, or the lore master as they're known in this game. You also get this pull out map as well, which is beautiful piece of artwork and mapping is very important in the journey phase. You actually get to draw out your own map. So here's uh, the Shire and then on the other side, there's a bigger map of Eriador itself, which is sort of where the focus is in Lord of the Rings role playing. You could set it in other areas of Middle Earth if you choose to, of course, using these rules. But for now, um, the starting area is uh, Eriador and obviously the Lost Kingdom of Arnor for you uh, Middle Earth nerds out there. Well, that rules you out. Anyway, the journey phase, um, it's like you, you get a sort of um, tactile experience of it's not just dice rolls, it's also drawing out the map and it's like working out what encounters happen along the way. There's a lot of back and forth between the lore master and the players. What is it? What do you smell? Man flesh. And then you've got council, which is uh, sort of your social interactions with uh, important people uh, and uh, this, this again mechanics of introductions introducing your party or your fellowship or your company or whatever you want to call them um your band of adventurers to uh this important person uh and then uh if that introduction goes well it sets the pace for the rest of the social encounter if it goes badly that also sets the mood for the rest of the encounter and can make things easier or more difficult and there's skill checks and all the rest of it be silent Keep your forked tongue behind your teeth. And it's just really nicely presented in the book. And it's um, 
very easy to follow. It was very easy for me to pick up. Like I said, moving from 5th edition to Lord of the Rings role-playing was a breeze. And so I can see why Free League decided to make that sort of port from the One Ring, uh, which uses its own set of dice. I think it's mostly um, D10s and D6s. And then uh, moving into a D20-based system, moving into uh, 5th edition compatibility, so we can capture all of us D&D people that are feeling a bit homeless at the moment. You don't have one. A home. It was taken from you. Yes, so that is that is the plan going forward. I'm going to be doing some videos all about the Lord of the Rings role-playing, just breaking down individual sections, which hopefully you'll find useful. If there's anything particular that you'd like me to talk about in new videos coming up, please, of course, leave a comment. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one. That's somebody else's phrase. I've just stolen Nate the Hoof Guy's phrase. Sorry, Nate.